All social relations are important in all of our lives. So, also for people with dementia. Friendships and other relations are still very important. But also, some people told us, love and intimacy. Not just friendships, but also those aspects of life that we think are important still holds for people with dementia too, in some cases. Being in touch with your partner, your children, your grandchildren, but not just being in touch with them. What we often heard is that people want to know that their children and grandchildren are well, that they are doing okay. So they might worry about their children and grandchildren. Of course, communication, meeting people, one-to-one -one contact. Not just being in a room with a lot of other people and relying on a bit of attention, no. Serious one-to-one -one contact, that's important. Self-esteem, just as we have that importance. And this is something that people told us a lot as well. They want to be accepted, accepted as, accepted as they are, with their limitations, with their disabilities, you could say. And they want to be accepted despite that there is more and more that I cannot do, a phrase that someone told us. So yes, the realization that your brain stops functioning or functioning less and less you still want to be acknowledged and be accepted as the person you are. Being able to help other people. Again, related to participating in the environment where you live in. It, it means also that it matters that you are here. You play a role, a function. There's some other people are expecting you to do things even as small as they could be. Just helping cleaning the table or other activities. It doesn't have to be grand or anything like that. Just small things, but the fact that you can participate and do things for other people is important. And sometimes you also hear the words of despair. My husband died. I have no children. What do I have to live for? Is there still, I have no feeling that there's any meaning in my life anymore. Now this is a kind of phrase of despair that we also can hear from people with dementia. So the question is then, how can you support that? How can you help someone overcome that feeling of despair? And the last aspect that I'd like to point something about is security and privacy. Well, Probably the most often heard phrase is that people want to go home. I think that being home, feeling at home somewhere, is a central need of people with dementia. And as I put between brackets, no strangers in your home. Well, that's something we encounter very often in a nursing home, of course, as soon as we cannot live in our own house with a partner, but also in your own home when home care comes and visits you and it might be ten different persons during the few weeks that come and help you dress or anything like that. Strangers in your home does not make you feel secure. And security, feeling secure in the sense that you're in a safe environment is an important thing for anyone. And this is then what you hear in nursing homes. I've lost all my things. Where are all my belongings? Anything that you can bring along might fit in a suitcase. Where are my paintings on the wall, the photographs, where are my books, where are my records, where is everything, my clothes? And if you do have a wardrobe in the nursing home, it might be locked and you can't get in. Out of practice. Some people also worry about getting sufficient care. If they realize that they cannot look after themselves anymore, any longer, it's important and it makes you feel 
afraid perhaps that if you have a feeling of who's going to take care of my meals I'm, can, I cannot organize it myself who's going to do my shopping who will cook for me who will do the housekeeping I don't know anymore how the washing machine works things like that so yes worries and this is particular I think for people with dementia what we hear a lot it's important that my parents are still alive. That gives me a sense of security. Now that was, most people will not have living parents any longer. It does provide fear and anxiety sometimes in dementia. People can worry much about that. Suddenly I these things, and coming back to the question, is there quality of life in dementia? I would like to uh, refer to a colleague of mine, Jacobine de Lange, who has done a lot of research, worked over 30 years in the field of caring for dementia, did a lot of studies and observation in nursing homes and with people with dementia. And she wrote a thesis dealing with dementia. She said in an interview recently, and I agree fully with her, that despite the fact that dementia is a very serious condition. It does not end the possibility of establishing friendships, of enjoying music, singing, of enjoying food and company, and of experiencing feelings that everybody has. It doesn't always have to be laugh and happiness. Sharing your sadness is important too, and acknowledging the fact that you can be sad at times. So yes, she is convinced that people with dementia can still have a good life. And I've seen that in my practice as well. Of course there is a lot of suffering, but with sufficient support and the right attitude of people, we can help people to live a good life. And with her, I would like to point out to the fact that the person with dementia is an actor within his or her own life. The person with dementia is still a person who can initiate all kind of behavior, who will react to what you will do or you will say to me. If there is interaction between the person with dementia and the people close and around her. So yes, that is an essential thing to realize, in my opinion, when you want to help and support people with dementia. Now, I want to focus a bit on the work of Professor Rosemary Dreus, I mentioned her earlier, with the research and study of uh, the aspects of quality of life. Um, and she studied, she started in the late 1980s and published a PhD in 1991. And she described in her PhD thesis what we call the, or what she calls the adaptation coping model. And she states that people with dementia, just like everybody else who is confronted with a serious disease, imagine lung disease, chronic heart condition, cancer, multiple, scler multiple sclerosis, things like that. Dementia is just another chronic disease in that sense, and it confronts you with consequences of it. You cannot do the things you would like to do. And therefore, people with dementia, just as people who are suffering from other chronic diseases, have to adapt to a new situation, are faced with challenges, and they have to cope with a new situation. A lot of behavior that we come across when people with dementia, when we meet them, can be interpreted, can be seen as coping behavior, as ways to deal with consequences. You can ignore things, you can deny, which is coping You can also let go, perhaps even apathy is a sense of co 
absorbing behavior. Quality of life in the late stage of dementia. So far, the results of studies and I've been talking about is what people <coughs> tell us. Now, this lady, and I think most of you, if certainly if you work with people with dementia, have met a few of those persons, <clears throat> is no longer capable of verbal communication. She cannot talk, perhaps utter a few words, but that's it. She's completely dependent on everything in her life. She needs to be washed and dressed. She needs to full assistance in toileting. She needs full assistance with eating and drinking. She cannot do anything and spends most of her day in bed. So, perhaps I convince some people that you can still have a good life when you have dementia, but is this living, some people ask me. And then I refer to the work of a colleague of mine, Raymond Koopmans in Nijmegen, who has studied a lot of people in this final stage, in this last stage of dementia. And I was a co-author of one of his studies. And he concludes that quality of life can be assessed, not only assessed, measured, but he says that it's moderate, even severe dementia. That also, up to the last stage, there's still a sense of feeling. And if there is a sense of feeling within the person, within the lady we just saw, there's also a sense of awareness. So yes, <coughs> also in this stage we should provide psychosocial care. Not just being a good nurse and knowing how to wash and dress someone properly, but also know and try to relate to this person. And you'll find that there is much more comfort in the life in the life of a person like this. So yes, even in that stage it's worthwhile to care and do good care for people with dementia. Actually, only approximately about one out of seven as results of Coppola's studies to one out of ten persons with dementia actually live up to reach this final stage. Usually people die of comorbidity of other diseases like cancer or heart failure before they reach the stage. But still one out of seven does live up a long age and marks the end of a long process of dementia deterioration. <coughs> now, so far about what quality of life means. And now I come to the question, how can we support? But before we do that, and before you let those off and get a bit distracted, I want you to do something, get more active. Most of you will have some kind of paper in front of you and a pen, and I would like you to take a minute and draw a house. Just a simple drawing of a house. It does not have to be a work of art. <laughs> I'm not judging you and your drawing abilities, just draw a house. What, what would you, the first thing that you come up to when you draw a home or a house? <coughs> 